Okay, so uh, welcome to the last lecture of uh, 562 this year. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, a continuation of uh, subject matter from uh, Monday. Um, so we introduced this idea of ORMs and uh, nested uh, hierarchical data and how that was kind of this huge issue with uh, uh, processing queries. Uh, today we're going to ta uh, take a look at a different form of hierarchical data in particular. We're going to be looking at uh, specifically XML and JSON and we're going to kind of see how that con uh, connects a little bit to uh, other forms of graph data and we'll be kind of exploring different query languages uh, that apply to each of these. So uh, kind of what's, why put these two uh, subjects into a lecture together? Well, the graph data is going to form kind of a minor component of this, but I want to get across uh, at least one basic concept. Uh, hierarchical data, uh, as much as it kind of uh, is structured, it has uh, clear distinct elements in it, uh, as opposed to graph data, which is kind of all over the place. Uh, fundamentally, both of them are quite similar uh, in that they're both expressed as a set of nodes connected by a set of edges. Um, in one case, the nodes, uh, the graph is uh, directed, directed and acyclic, but in both cases, you're kind of working with a set of uh, nodes and a set of edges. Um, the only difference, as I said, is in hierarchical data, you have uh, this notion of containment. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to focus mostly today on uh, hierarchical data, JSON and XML, because, well, that's what people were interested in. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Um, I'm going to be using an example throughout most of today's lecture, uh, basically a set of uh, Star Trek doctors, uh, as well as several of the various officers that act as their patients. Um, so you can kind of look at this in the uh, context of the monad algebra uh, syntax I used previously. Here we have uh, a collection of tuples, each tuple being a pair of doctor and then a collection of uh, patients. So let me start off with uh, a little bit of schema. You can kind of look at this collection as having a very strict type. Uh, we have a collection of ships, and each of those uh, ships have a very strict type associated with them. Uh, every, the ship is a collection of ships, and sorry, the ships, the, the outermost uh, object is a collection of ship objects, and each ship object, again, has a very uh, precise uh, structured uh, type. So the, the question I'd, I pose to you is if we have uh, this kind of hier hierarchy of data, um, how do we represent it? How can we take this uh, structured object and store it in some, some form that we can uh, then query? XML, okay. So we can store it as uh, an XML object. How would we store it as a, uh, would we be able to represent something like uh, this in a set of relations? How, how might we represent it in uh, an RDBMS? Hmm? With foreign keys, okay. So what, uh, what entities would we uh, create in this setting? So we have doctor, we have patient, and then every patient kind of uh, points back to the corresponding doctor. So there's kind of a natural uh, two entity representation here, and there's a relationship between those two. But this kind of relational uh, approach to the data is, uh, it. So if, if we took this data and we stored it on disk in terms of uh, entities and the, uh, the well, 
the set of doctor entities, the set of uh, patient entities, then we'd end up with uh, kind of decoupling the storage for the doctors from the storage uh, for the, the patients that uh, see that particular doctor. Now this means that when we tried to access all of the patients for a given doctor, we couldn't be necessarily assured that they, uh, they might be spread out over multiple pages. So we lose some degree of locality. Uh, moreover, the, this kind of hierarchical relationship relies very closely on, uh, how to put this, the, the doctors being kind of the, the core element. If we have one table of doctors, one table of uh, patients, what if we wanted to restructure this in terms of, uh, let's say, ships that the doctors served on? What I'm kind of getting at here is that the schema of the data is uh, by kind of fixing it into a particular format, by uh, representing it in a very uh, strict uh, essentially by decomposing it into these individual relations, you lose a lot of the structure. A lot of the, the structure gets obscured. And one thing that I'm going to try and uh, get across today is this idea that by it, it makes sense to couple the uh, schema to the representation that you're using for the data. Um, now, uh, one thing that was mentioned was one particular way of representing this would be as kind of uh, directly in this hierarchical representation. One particular format for doing this is XML. Um, I'm sure everyone has at least taken, uh, seen HTML in some form or another. XML is basically just a form of HTML. It's a, a way of representing an arbitrary tree of nodes. And, and the, uh, the, the kind of motivation behind XML, or kind of one of the, the, the core components of, of the way that it represents data, is that every part of the schema is explicit in the data representation itself. So if we were to store everything as a set of uh, two relations, we could lay those individual relations out on disk. We could store them individually. But just glancing at kind of one, of one row at a time wouldn't necessarily be enough to reconstruct the original kind of this hierarchy. With an XML object, everything is very neatly structured. Now there's a couple of features of XML I'd like to highlight. So uh, as I said, everything is a hierarchy and every node in the hierarchy has a name. Even if the node is a collection of objects, even if the node is uh, a single object, the node has a name. And every element is kind of self-describing in and of itself. The, the node's name is part of the node itself. Uh, Every node can have a set of children enclosed uh, with this you know, backslash tag, exactly like in HTML. And nodes can have attributes. Uh, one other interesting feature of this is that nodes, node names are not guaranteed to be unique. So a particular, uh, a particular collection could have multiple nodes with the same name. But kind of the, uh, the main kind of one of the, the, the main interesting features here is that the, the node's identity, uh, the, the way that you identify a particular node, is directly connected to the node itself. Uh, the same, another kind of way of uh, representing a, a similar structure would be through something called JSON, uh, JavaScript object notation. And the idea here is essentially that you have a language consisting of arrays, uh, hash maps, and uh, you know, primitive types. Well, arrays and objects as they're called. Uh, I want to bring this up mainly because it's, well, XML, is, all of the stuff that we're going to be just, uh, talking about today kind of applies 
predominantly to XML, but the same basic ideas can be uh, applied to JSON. Uh, the one distinction being that the nodes are not uniquely identified uh, yeah, by themselves. Okay, a couple of pieces of terminology. Uh, you probably are already familiar with these, uh, but parent is the node immediately above a given node in the hierarchy, or it's uh, immediate uh, in edge. Uh, child is the node immediately below a node in the hierarchy. Sibling is a node with the same parent. Ancestor is any kind of parent of parent of parent of parent of parent, however many times. Uh, descendant, same thing but with child. And the root is the one element kind of at the, uh, that has no parent. Um, so in this example, uh, ships would be the root. Uh, patient would be a descendant of ships. So um, now we've talked about two different ways of representing this data. Uh, either is this structured hierarchy of objects, uh, of nodes, excuse me, uh, or as kind of a relational expression. We've also talked about a handful of different ways of uh, querying, both uh, during the last lecture, a handful of different ways of querying uh, these kind of nested structures. So let's start with the relational representation. What would a query over this, ob uh, what would the following query be uh, in a relational representation? Where we have doctors and then uh, patients with a set of foreign keys. We wanted to write a uh, standard relational query for this. We have two two relations. This ought to be simple by now. How do we express that query? Come on. Thank you. Select. Select doctor.name from doctors and patients where? Thank you. So I do a join between these two, and then I, try, uh, I do a selection on uh, the patient's table. OK. So let's say that I've taken this relation. That was the warm up. Now let's say I take this relation. How would I express it in uh, nested relational algebra, the relation? So I have one, one relation here, right? Um, I know there are some people here who were here Monday. So what would the relation look like in nested relational algebra? Hmm? So I've got patience as a list of things. Maybe a better way to express this would be something like that. How would I express the patient's field of this tuple? Hmm? Inside.
And that would be what? What type would this be? So this has to be a set of objects, right? And how do we express that? In Remember, nested relational algebra. <clears throat> nested relational <clears throat> algebra. I know it's the, hmm? thank you. As a nested relation with one attribute, let's call it name. Okay, so we have a nested relation. So Uh, OK, so how would we write this query that we have up here? Remember, it was a join first. How would we, we write it on a nested uh, relation, as a, uh, using nested relational algebra? OK, cool. So. As with everything in nested relational algebra, the very first thing we need to do is unnest until everything that we're looking for is at the root level. So we'll unnest. And then we unnest the patient's subrelation. And that gives us what? OK, so McCoy, Kirk, McCoy, Spock, Crusher, uh, Picard, Crusher, Riker, etc. OK, and then? OK, then we select as, as before, and then uh, we can project patients away. OK, so that's select. and then project down to doctor. OK. Cool. All right. I'm pulling in, uh, NRA was kind of like pulling teeth, so I'm going to uh, gloss over monad algebra. But uh, I guess the, the main question here is, so one of these, we expressed everything through a join. In, uh, sorry, in relational algebra, we expressed everything using a join. In nested relational algebra, we had to do this unnest, which kind of corresponds to the join. And in monad algebra, the solution basically involves a map. So my, my question to you is, which of these kind of makes the most sense. Monad, OK. Well, actually, if you're going to bring that up, what would the uh, monad algebra equivalent be? Hmm? Well, so we did a selection. Let's call, uh, let's say that we have uh, selection defined as a filter operation make things a little easier. OK, so we've got, uh, well, we've got our input, which is this uh, collection of tuples. All right. So now, what do we have to do? We have to. Well, we can't flatten this directly because there's uh, flatten only operates on tuples, uh, sorry, on uh, collections of collections. Here we have a collection of tuples. 
what we need to do first. All right, this is a little bit. Hmm? So map. Okay, so you'd have to do. Uh, so you'd have to pair this guy with every element of that. Okay, now, important thing. Um, I've, I kind of brought this up mostly on the forums. There's, a, uh, there's an explicit pair with operator that takes a tuple as an input and pairs the first element of the tuple with every element of the, uh, every element of the um, second argument. So, or pair with, so map of okay, and then we do the selection on that. So Well, don't, uh, filter, I don't really have enough space here. Yeah. So, If we treat like as basically an arithmetic operator, as we did with all the other operators, then this becomes uh, we do our weird little selection with the if statement on that, and we end up with right. Okay, so why would uh, what is uh, what is the argument for uh, this making the most sense in monad algebra. OK, so you're not doing any kind of nesting or unnesting. Uh, OK. Well, pair width is pretty expensive, yeah. And you're doing some deduplication. Um, now, my argument to you is that each of these has one basic primitive in it. Um, and we've got our queries here. If we use this, uh, if we do this through monad algebra, we essentially have to have a number of maps. Uh, you can actually do this using some nested if statements to save on the pair with. Uh, but you've got some maps and you've got some ifs. Uh, if you do this using uh, Relational algebra, you can you don't have the maps, but you you now have to join several things together. And if you do this using uh, nested relational algebra, you have these unnest operations. And in each case, you kind of explicitly have to state that you are iterating over some children, uh, whether that's map. Uh, a foreign key join or uh, an unnest statement, you're explicitly stating that you're iterating over all of the children simply to find one of them that uh, satisfies a particular pattern. Now, this general stru uh, query structure occurs frequently enough uh, in queries over hierarchical data um, that it potentially makes sense to express it in a slightly more general form. What do I mean by that? What we're doing with, each, with these joins, these maps, these unnests, is essentially following edges in the hierarchy. 
So what if we simply expressed some sort of pattern in the hierarchy instead? Um, if we could kind of capture that idea of a join or, or a, an unnest or a map using uh, a sort of structure uh, between these edges. Kind of the, the gimmick that I'm going to try and push today is this idea of using paths or more generally patterns uh, in the graph, uh, in the graph of edges, as a, a means of querying these objects. What I'm going to kind of, as, as a motivating example, uh, show of hands, who's been exposed to regular expressions before? OK, good. That, um, basically, the idea, or the, the, the central idea that I'm going to try and get across today is this idea of uh, using something along the lines of regular expressions to ask questions, uh, to, to find paths in a graph. What is a regular expression? It's basically a path through a string. Um, and the two languages that I'm going to immediately uh, introduce are one called XPath and one called XQuery. Uh, XQuery is kind of a more advanced form of XPath. And each of these uh, essentially allows you to define a pattern, uh, a, a uh, path, through this hierarchy uh, that allows you to pick out certain elements of the, the hierarchy that are um, of interest to you. So let's start with XPath. Um, kind of the, the two basic primitives in XPath, or the two simplest forms of query, are either just uh, a word or a slash. And um, every query in XPath kind of identifies a set of nodes. So if I just have a single word, that identifies every single node with that particular uh, name. I have a slash that identifies uh, basically the root node. Any questions up to this point? OK, so starting from those two roots, I can build up more and more complex queries by adding on additional components. Uh, put a slash, well, that gives me a child, exactly like it would in uh, if I were writing a file path or a URL path. So if I have uh, ship uh, identifies all of my ships, and then I add a doctor, and that uh, pulls out the specific doctor element of each ship. And this is a query. Ship slash doctor gives me every single doctor on a ship. Uh, that? Uh, sorry, did I? I may have jumped over. The base data is that. So, ship, uh, it has attributes. This is basically the same structure, but the, I've got an element called ships. Uh, each ship contains a set of elements called ship. Uh, each ship element contains a single doctor element and a single patient ele patient's element, uh, which in turn contains a set of patient elements. So this is going to give me every ship picks out all of, all of the ship attributes, uh, and then ship slash doctor goes into that and pulls out the doctor element that is a child of ship. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. This should be Dr. McCoy, Dr. Crusher. OK, um, that's the simple one. You can think of that as being kind of analogous to projection. There's also something analogous to selection. Um, I can put, I can append to any query some sort, uh, in square brackets, uh, a predicate. And that predicate can either be an index or it can be a Boolean expression. 
which itself may contain further queries. Um, if I use a number, it returns the nth element of a given uh, set of uh, return values. So for example, the first, uh, the first example here uh, looks at ship's ship and returns just the first ship to be matched. So this would be uh, the doctor of the first ship. I can also have uh, queries nested inside my predicate. So for example, I could have patients slash patient equals Kirk. What that will do is return to me all instances of ship that have a child patients, which has a child patient, the value of which is uh, Kirk. So you can think of this as an existence test. I can also query for individual attributes using the at symbol. Any questions? OK. Yes? Uh, so like I said, it's an existence test. If um, this, so uh, the first of these examples, uh, ship, patient, patients, uh, there are two different, um, uh, where is it? Yeah, so. copy this just so it's on the board um, so let's take a look at that second example uh, patient's patient equals Kirk. Uh, so this ship has two patients. One of them satisfies the predicate, one of them does not. The pattern, uh, the predicate will evaluate to true because there exists one value that satisfies it. In the case of an attribute, if the attribute, the attribute is either present or not present. Uh, if it's not present, it, uh, there can't exist an attribute that, exi that satisfies the predicate. Does that address your question? Any other questions? All right. Uh, so moving on. So I've kind of. Uh, one other attribute, uh, sorry, one other operator, uh, I can express union through the vertical pipe. Uh, but kind of something I'd like to call attention to is that each of the operations in XPath loosely correspond to, uh, loosely correspond to a operation in relational algebra. Slash is basically a reference to the entire relation. Uh, predicate is a selection. Uh, Backslash is, depending on how you want to look at it, either a projection or a join. And you can even express union through this uh, vertical pipe character. Yeah? Would slash slash node also be projection? Uh, okay. So one thing I'm glossing over a little bit is uh, you can also have, uh, XPath also allows you to express uh, descendant of uh, using slash slash. So if I wrote, uh, this went a little beyond my example here, uh, but I could write, for example, uh, ship slash slash ship slash slash patient, and that would patient is a descendant of ship. This would return to me every patient that was a descendant of uh, ship. Uh, 
you've actually brought up uh, an interesting point that I will get back to in about, actually, yeah, let's do it now. Uh, you've, you've brought up an interesting point. Um, let's say that we did have this very nice representation of nodes using relational algebra. Uh, sorry, using uh, standard relational, the standard re really using the standard relational model. Is this a query that I could express over that representation? Find me a descendant, an arbitrary descendant of a given node. OK, let's back up a little. How do we express the child relationship? So how do we say we were going to express the child relationship in as a foreign key constraint? OK. So if I have a query like <coughs> patient's patient, that's essentially a foreign key lookup. A join plus a projection, if you will. So then what is this? Join, and then join, and then join. You're essentially joining an infinite, or potentially infinite number of times. Um, if you have a bounded depth on the query, then you can express that in relational algebra. But otherwise, this is actually the, the point I was going to get across is that this is actually something that you cannot express in, uh, in relational algebra. Um, SQL has a couple of extensions that allow you to capture this idea. But in general, uh, kind of What's the word that everyone hates that kind of captures what is going on here? Uh, so I have uh, a, a thing. I, I compute something, and then uh, I call the function again to compute something on that input, and then I call this. Yeah. Uh, basically, this, uh, the, the term for this is a recursive query. Um, you are basically recursively computing some uh, something on its input. And that's not something relational algebra handles. OK, so basically to summarize, uh, there's kind of this nice correspondence between most, not all, but most of uh, X path and equivalent operations in relational algebra. Yes? Actually, no. Um, monad algebra cannot express this either. Um, what would the equivalent be? What would the equivalent of um, this be in monad algebra? I remember, I said uh, joins are equivalent to, or kind of, sort of analogous to. Pair with, well, yeah, pair with uh, foreign key joins specifically, uh, or child lookups are kind of analogous to a map. Uh, actually, that leads to an interesting question of why. Why is it OK not to do this kind of infinite recursion, uh, kind of dereferencing things in sets in monad algebra, but it's OK to do it in XML? What do you mean by that you know the length? I mean, the, the number of child, child couples, and they will be a finite. Uh, and then you can use An interesting, uh, at what point do you, uh, so the, the comment is you know the number of children uh, in a 
give an XML doc, or the, the depth of nesting. Um, that's potentially true. Once I've seen the XML document, I certainly know how deep the elements are nested. But that's also true of monad algebra. If I have a given monad algebra expression applies strictly to uh, objects of a given type or uh, inputs of a given type. And that type precisely defines how deeply uh, the object is, is nested. Is that the case for an XML document? If I, if I have a query like this, can I infer from the query how deeply the object is nested? And that's kind of the, the nifty thing. And I, I'm, I'm going to get back to this in, in a bit. Uh, XML and JSON are examples of what's called self-describing data. And I, I mentioned this. The schema is embedded entirely in the document. And so the query languages end up being much more flexible uh, and essentially designed to, uh, to adapt to a variety of different input schemas. That's why it's not necessary to prefix every uh, path with a slash because you might not know how deeply the object is nested. OK, so um, any other questions on XPath? So XQuery, you can kind of think of as a uh, set of extensions to XPath. Um, XQuery is a strict superset of XPath. So anything you do in XPath, you can do in XQuery. Uh, but XQuery adds a couple of other things. Um, in addition to be a being able to reference uh, multiple documents or multiple routes, you can also name entities. And this actually turns out to be quite powerful. Um, so the two examples of this are you can define, uh, you can use let to define a uh, kind of a shorthand for a given expression. And you can use for uh, to kind of express iteration over the children of a given object. It turns out this for business is actually quite powerful. And I'll see that in just a moment. One other thing that you can do is uh, define functions in XQuery. And again, these are kind of mostly just shorthands. I, the functions themselves don't add any additional power, just they make life a little easier. OK. Now, I've kind of said that this, this kind of expression is analogous to a join, or specifically a foreign key join. But what if we have what if we have something like this? Uh, oops. OK, a little bit of data. Now, what if, I, what if I were to ask a question like, what is the set of A's for which there is also a set, uh, for which there is also a B? Essentially, compute the join of the A relation with the B relation, or the intersection, which intersection is join. Could we express that in XPath or uh, in XQuery? Let me bring that back up. Naively, how, would, how might we go about doing this join? Simplest kind of join that you can think of. Um, 
Okay, so two XPath expressions. Um, I can. Uh, now let me get another piece of chalk. All right, so how would you express that? Okay, so how, so A, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. What do you mean by dollar Y? Okay, so what? So what's nice about this is that you get um, the a for loop effectively defines a set of values, just like a XPath query defines a set of uh, of nodes. You can uh, you can use next path query to define a uh, a set of nodes. Just like I have a nested loop in a nested loop join in uh, relational algebra, I could I could express the same concept I could express the same concept in uh, XPath. Now the one piece of power that this adds is that you can actually generate values using attributes from both levels of nesting. You're basically defining an attribute on the outside of this loop and you're able to use it inside the loop. a uh, term for this tensor product the idea is that you xpath essentially introduces this idea of nested scope Sorry, not tensor product. Uh, tensor. Gah. Blanking. Uh, the idea is that XPath introduces, by introducing this ability to move context from one scope into the next, it's essentially allowing you to distribute a given element over multiple elements of a set. You're essentially splitting that element, replicating it multiple times, and that is something that you cannot do uh, in XPath. So while you can do, while you can test for existence, you can't construct nested elements from both uh, kind of both sides. Okay, any questions so far? All right, 
Uh, let's take a quick five minute break and be back at. Uh... All right. So uh, the term I was looking for just momentarily was a tensorial strength operator. Uh, basically, like I said, distribute one element over every element of a given uh, set. Uh, this is analogous to pair with. This is analogous to uh, join. Uh, and I will note that in the monad algebra, this is not something you can do with map. In order for it to be uh, something you could do with map, you'd have to be able to push uh, some context into the map operation, uh, which, you, which is not something uh, that monad algebra gives you the ability to do. OK, so we've talked about uh, hierarchical data. Uh, I want to briefly kind of uh, run across one other uh, kind of related concept, graph data. So we've talked about how to uh, look at uh, data when there's this kind of nice hierarchical relationship. But what if you have uh, kind of uh, just the nodes and the edges? You don't necessarily have this containment relation. We've talked about this idea of using patterns as a way of uh, synthesizing join queries. Can we do the same thing for graphs? Before we do that, how might we go about representing the graph data itself? What is, what is a graph? What are the, the kind of uh, entities and the relationship sets that participate in, in a graph? Edges and nodes. Uh, nodes are the entities, and every there's only one type of entity, a node, and edges are the relationship sets, uh, many uh, one to many relations. So, essentially, what the way the graph data is often represented is well, pretty much precisely this way, um, and more importantly, the kind of interesting bit here isn't necessarily the individual nodes. Uh, the interesting bit is the edges. So the way that uh, graph data is typically represented is essentially as an edge list. Uh, sequences of uh, nodes, uh, edge labels, and well, node, edge label, node. Uh, you can kind of think of this as a subject predicate object. Um, or to give you a more precise example, uh, Enterprise A is a ship. Enterprise A's doctor is McCoy. Enterprise A's crew is um, McCoy, Kirk, and Spock. And McCoy's patient is Kirk or Spock. And unlike typical hierarchical data, you can have cycles. You can have, um, well, it's a directed graph, but it's a directed graph that can have uh, cycles. So is XPath good enough to capture content of this sort? Could we, for example, capture something along the lines of uh, what is the name of a doctor who served on a, who is uh, the doctor of a ship that was visited by someone on the crew of a ship that was named for it? Or, well, let's simplify that a little. Could we capture something along the lines of find entities who visited a ship named after a ship uh, that X was a crew on, crew member on? Let's make this even simpler. Could we express this as a SQL query? Let's say we had one table containing all of the edges, node, uh, node, label, node, how would we express this as a SQL query? Maybe let's simplify this. Find all entities x who visited a ship. 
the entity visited ship is one node. That's a simple selection on the edge label. All right. So now, what if then the ship was named, uh, let's find all entities x who visited a ship named after another ship. So I can get ships named after another ship. That's one, uh, that's one selection. Entities uh, who visited a ship, that's another relation. You can join them on that shared attribute, the shared ship. What about the last edge in there? X was a crew on the ship. Well, it's, can we get uh, all ships that X was a crew member on? Again, another join with the same relation. And this time, though, the join kind of connects back because you've got, you're kind of selecting from two things. Uh, let me make that a little simpler. You've got this nice little cyclic query. So find me all X uh, who visited a ship that was named after uh, a ship on which they acted as a crew. Now, each of those edges in this case is a join, just like with path uh, components. The only difference now is that you don't have this one-to-many relationship. This is not, uh, there's still foreign key, but you don't have this nice one-to-many relationship so the join now becomes a real join, not just a kind of child lookup. But just like you have path queries, just like you can express a path as a pattern, you can express this kind of pattern using a language. Now, because you can kind of have these patterns be branching out in all every which way, it doesn't make sense to express the path as a sequence of, uh, of individual node IDs. In this case, it makes sense to kind of express every individual join independently. And so there's a language called Sparkle that does pretty much this. Uh, you specify essentially a list of joins. In this case, uh, X visited ship is one thing, ship two. Uh, ship two named after ship one. It's another join. Ship one, crew X. And this just expresses one really big join and then a selection predicate on top of that. Now, I've been throwing all of these languages at you. I don't intend the languages themselves to, to stick. The one thing I want to really get across is that each of these languages is expressing the same fundamental concepts. Everything is something, some form of join projection, recursive join, or selection. Everything. All right, so the other thing that I've already brought up a couple of times, self-describing data. What each of these basic data types have in common is this idea that the data itself provides a full description of the schema. We've mentioned how this affects the query languages a little bit, because now the query languages have to be much more flexible. You have to accommodate, they have to kind of describe the schema that they're expecting to see. How does, how does, this, uh, how does this affect the data layout? or efficiency of the queries. Okay, so the schema can now be much more flexible, and that means we don't have quite as much control over the way the data is stored on disk. Uh, in fact, in an XML document, it's basically a raw text file. So typically, you're going to see these uh, XML processing systems, these graph database processing systems that don't operate directly on the base data. Just like uh, in the project, you imported a CSV file into memory, processed the kind of in-memory version. The same basic idea. Okay. Um, all right.
So I guess I'm running a little bit short on time. So let's, all right. So way back at the start of the semester, I showed you a bunch of slides that kind of boiled down to this and kind of want to wrap everything up with, with this slide. The, the kind of, if, if you get away, if you walk away from this course with nothing else, um, I kind of want you to, to walk away with a few things. What is a database? It's a way that you, uh, it's a set of tools or a class of tools that allow you to uh, ask and answer questions about data and uh, that allow you to manipulate data in some uh, consistent and uh, well, parallel way. But more than that, the, the, the kind of main thing I want to get across is that there's no sort of one right way to manage data. Um, and kind of the, the core thing behind databases, the, the, the core thing I want you to take away from this course is that there's a whole set of tools uh, for managing data, a whole set of tools for asking and answering questions about data. And really the, the core approach that if you're designing a database, if you're designing, even if you're just designing a regular program, the, the kind of core approach that you should be taking is to start with something correct 